So just a couple of minutes waiting for the big boss. Okay, let's start with this uh, session on a circular economy. Maybe President Simeone will join us later. And let's start by welcoming our special guest here today, uh, who will help uh, me and you to discuss about uh, this very interesting uh, topic, uh, circular economy on uh, highlands. So it's a pleasure for me to welcome uh, George Alexakis, Regional Councillor, CPMR also Vice, Vice President for Maritime Affairs, uh, representing a Crete region here. And uh, of course, it's a pleasure for me to welcome uh, Han Thomas, Vice Mayor uh, of uh, Bornholm Region. And uh, I do welcome uh, Drosos uh, Kutsobas, Professor, uh, coming from the University of uh, Hagen, representing uh, uh, also the project uh, Plastic Buster. And uh, of course, it's a, uh, a great pleasure for me to welcome uh, our friends uh, Luca Marangoni, who knows very well uh, the CPMR and the Island Commission, and we know very well him, uh, working for the European Commission for DG Mare. So before giving the floor to our guests, let me uh, spend a few seconds just to share with you uh, some information about uh, what uh, we do and uh, what we are planning to do uh, when it comes to uh, circular economy. Uh, as you say, uh, you, as you know, this is a very interesting uh, topic, a key topic for uh, uh, Highlands today. Uh, and uh, uh, this means that we are expected to work today in the future on implementing a very holistic approach dealing with waste and water management but also energy transition because uh, these are the key core uh, topics when we talk about uh, uh, circular economy in, uh, in the islands of course. Uh, according to uh, what we decided uh, also in Bastia, what we are trying uh, uh, today is to develop uh, our first uh, uh, activity on this topic. This means that we are trying to, first of all, uh, identify uh, best practice in our member region, uh, trying to develop uh, a joint approach on this topic and uh, uh, disseminate this uh, know-how outside of our network. And this is uh, what we will do, for instance, next week, uh, the Highland Commission uh, has been invited to participate in the uh, Circle 2019 uh, conference, which is a very important conference dealing with uh, circular economy uh, in the islands. And uh, we will do our best in order to represent, of course, your needs and your political demand in this very high level uh, uh, meeting. And from an internal point of view, in terms of uh, advocacy and the lobbying, of course, uh, what we are trying to do is uh, also to share our experience uh, with the other geographical commission of the CPMR, uh, because of, of course, the circular economy is a 
something related or that could be related to the highland dimension but uh, this is also uh, it is also a reality in a other uh, different types of territories and the idea is to have uh, very soon a very joint intercommission agenda on this uh, uh, topic uh, that will mean uh, that we will have the opportunity to develop a joint position on the future of a circular economy so very briefly okay that's all and uh, uh, now uh, i will uh, give the floor uh, to uh, the first uh, uh, speaker george alexakis you have the floor you will uh, share with us uh, uh, your experience in terms of uh, implementing a circular economy in uh, Crete islands so you have the floor Thank you very much. I would like to present you what a region can do. I will speak in Greek, so feel free to procure your headset. I will tell you what a region can do for secular economy. I'm talking about the region that is on an island, a region that is rather isolated and remote. So, at the region of Crete, like I said, at the region of Crete, we saw that the main problems had to do with water, waste management, agronutrition, Agriculture that similar problems were the major points of concern for the remaining islands in the Mediterranean. In 2016, we invited at Crete experts from all around the world in order to talk about circular economy. It was an international conference with the participation of ministries from Greece, all the insular regions, representatives from the Commission, DG Energy and Environment. Back then, we decided to establish the Cretan Statement on Circular Economy. One year later, in Malta, in March 2017, under the Malta opportunity to talk about circular economy focusing on the islands. You can see in the picture President Simeone, who was present. If you watch his presentation, the presentation made by the head of the region of Crete, they were practically identical. They were talking about the same problems. So in that way, we realized that many of the Mediterranean islands are faced with similar problems. Joint action is therefore needed. One year later, in October 2018, again at Crete, we sent the DGs of energy and environment, these networks, and the major difference compared to previous events was that we had involvement of businesses with B2B meetings. It was the first time that we talked about the circular economy as a new business model. Something that goes beyond recycling. The circular economy is the ideal business model inclusion of our discussions. So, we are currently preparing our next conference in Cyprus in order to discuss about the latest developments. All those things take place and they also happen in Brussels. We organized a workshop focusing on circular economy and insularity. Crete, Corsica, 
Balearic Islands and Sardinia were involved. The workshop concluded that circular economy is a green apart from the open days of 2018 event we also held another seminar at Brussels at the premises of Crete region and we also had the participation of the Green Islands Network. This network brought forward thematic pillars such as water, energy and mobility. And we also added waste management because we thought it would be very interesting for us to discuss it with uh, other regions and see the developments in other, on other islands. Here you can see a brief overview of the key points from Crete's declaration on circular economy that was signed in 2016. If you read it today, you might take it for granted, but can you imagine that three years ago those things were not self-explanatory, neither obvious. So I think it was the first time a statement that was agreed upon by all Mediterranean islands. And this has to do with everything that was discussed during the first panel. Those are the conclusions from uh, the conference at Hanya in 2018. I believe that's worth mentioning a couple points. First of all, the synergies that need to be developed among islands and insular networks. Because we need to consider the scale of uh, circular economy applications. This was also mentioned this morning in a previous session. Not all islands are the same and we need to consider the size of each island separately. Lastly, we need to include a private sector in the circular economy field and we need to consider circular economy as a business model that will create new jobs. This is the production chain that you'll know about. It's a linear chain. Circular economy targets are changing and altering this flow. So we thought that maybe we could do something else, something I'm going to show you right now. So when it comes now, when it comes to the agronutrition, we described value chains in wineries because we wanted to introduce the topic of circular economy and we did the same. So we did the same with the cheese making establishment because this was also very accurate, for, very relevant to our island. And we described value chain over there as well. So then we took another step. It had to do with uh, a survey on circular economy in the, and we discussed uh, with that's another topic I need to talk about. This was also included in a cross-regional collaboration program 
where the collaboration among all regions of Europe was brought forward. It also requires synergy in the framework of the four helices. I'm talking about the first sector, society, research centers, citizens, and private sector. This program was the trigger in order to start talking about circular economy. I'm talking about the screen program, of course. This is part of the Horizon family with uh, the involvement of various region across 12 different states and uh, a national organization from Great Britain where they apply the same methodology in all regions. The goal was to achieve circular economy applications. The program was coordinated by Lazio region in Italy. And now I'm going to make a brief presentation of the methodology followed because I believe it's very important to consider it. In all the regions, we try to describe the value chain like I said before. In the region of Crete, we chose wineries and cheese making, in fact, cheese making establishments. We try to group methodologies across the regions in order to have a common ground. The third step, the third step, like I said, included various ways of financing for those initiatives. But the question was how we can obtain and get money and give it to the various <coughs> businesses involved in the circular economy field. The fourth step is the most important one. It had to do with the criteria on the basis of which money is going to be given. A circular economy, I'm talking about multifactorial criteria, and they were not available at the time of the research. And at the bottom, you can see the horizontal axis, which means that all 16 regions that carried out the same research, they followed the same protocol, the same methodology. Apart from the agronutrition, we're also interested in tourism, so we expanded research on circular economy on tourism as well. The occasion to do that was, of course, Blue Island pro program. The main goal is to carry out research on waste fluctuations in, uh, in, during the high season. I will go through those slides very quickly. So, in that way, we wanted to mobilize local foci of a circular economy. And uh, this program involves all the areas you can see on the map. A big group was created, including regions, GDs, European Bank for Investments, networks, classes, and a small specialization platform. All those things were united under the umbrella of a single program in order to claim more programs later on. I talked about the RAS, so a short reference should be made about a risk uh, relation to the region of Crete. Our goal is to focus on the public and private partnership opportunities So, public and private partnerships. When it comes to the RAS involvement in Crete, we have come up with four pillars. We're talking about the agri-food aspect, culture, environment, and society of knowledge. Secular economy is relevant in all four pillars. In particular, when it comes to the agri-food sector, 
further to the consultation that was held, we believe that this sector is an investment priority. This activity will be eligible and money will be dispersed to the companies and businesses wishing to hold circular economy actions in the agri-food sector. Okay, that was all. Thank you very much for your attention. I present you what a region can do. I'm talking about a big region that is, however, isolated geographically. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, George. Indeed, the cross-regional circular economy strategy are quite important for you and uh, also for all the other uh, Highland Commission members. And uh, I do love the, your map. And uh, I think that uh, your, uh, your map showed a very interesting uh, uh, input for us, that uh, there is a lot of experience in our uh, other most member, other most region member, uh, in terms of uh, using uh, structural funds in order to support the development of uh, circular economy. So we do look forward to hear for our other most region member to learn uh, your experience. So we move to the second speaker. So Anne, you will share with us your experience in Borno. So you have the floor, please. Thank you. Um, so Bonholm has uh, set out with an ambitious uh, strategy uh, in terms of uh, circular economy. Uh, we've decided basically to be without waste in 2032. Can I have the remote control? Good luck. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Beginner's luck. Um, so I want to go through the vision and uh, the framework for it and uh, how we're going to measure it and, uh, and also a little bit about the economy and uh, the organization. Yeah, it was beginner's luck. Um, I would want to go to the that one. Thank you. No, that... That's that's the first one, okay. So I can go from here. There. Yeah. Uh, so the vision is to be without uh, waste in 2032, and then a lot of people are asked, what does that mean? Basically, it means to uh, eliminate thinking of waste as waste, but thinking of it as resources that is recycled. And as soon as you look at it as resources, uh, the, the basic elements that we all know from other resources apply, such as on an island you're surrounded by water, you have transport uh, uh, expenditures, uh, you have no economy of scale, uh, um, and, it, and uh, uh, you don't have any neighbors, uh, near neighbors to cooperate with. So all those things apply for uh, resources, uh, not only human resources, but uh, in a waste uh, matters themselves. Um, we want, of course, uh, to use this uh, uh, as a platform for for the growth and the development. And I'm very, I very much agree with the with Crete's view on it that it's it's about business model uh, circular economy, and it makes absolute sense for islands. So um, the framework to get there, of course, started off with the. Uh, uh, the COP21 uh, goal setting. We also have uh, the UN goals, uh, specifically uh, these five ones are, are related in this, uh, in this area. Uh, but also on a Danish level, um, we, have, we have two different types of, uh, of measures on the EU, EU level and on the Danish level. So, uh, as you know, the, on the EU level, we have uh, the, um, the goal of the 65% of household waste in 2035, but on a Danish level, we speak specifically of seven uh, fractions of focus uh, for which we need to, to reach a certain goal in a, by 2022. So that's, of course, uh, the basis of our decision. We, uh, we, had a, we had also formulated a vision with uh, eight goals. I'm not going to go through them now, just to say that basically it looks at, um, at uh, sustainable growth as a business opportunity and as a community involvement um, of, in everything we do. 
you never know whether to go twice or to to, to run. All oh, right, right. So um, uh, basically, what happened is that we have an incineration plant on the island that we know is technically default by 2032. So by that time, we know that if we still have waste, we either have to rebuild a new incineration plant or start shipping waste out of the island. That's what, uh, what set off the, the whole idea. Why not try to, uh, to, uh, to, to get to a position of, of uh, having solved that? And how are we going to do that? We don't know. Uh, that's the point. So uh, what the tracks and the measures uh, come to is just as much we want to figure out how to do this. It's not about, it's a, it's a bit different to, to the fractions that we know we need to, uh, to collect by 2022 or 2032. We, con we, uh, we concentrate on, on the collection, we con concentrate on the treatment. But in this case, we're looking at trying to eliminate waste. And that is a whole different political ball game because it's actually about figuring out. You can say we started off a research and development department uh, to find out what. And, a ho and of course, we're not alone in this. The, the entire um, uh, EU and, and the world is, is with us. Um, if I had more time, I'd go into these specific uh, areas. But I just want to point out the ones that talk about the, um, the learning and the knowledge and the organization because that's actually a very important part of uh, what we're seeing. If you notice this uh, table here, it falls into three types of green categories. The, the short term, where we, f we, we focus on what we already are doing, the recycling of the known household waste, the, the, uh, the political, political goals that are already there. But as soon as we get into the middle green, we are into an area where, where we're looking at all the private, I mean, the industrial part, the business part of stuff. And normally, the municipal handling of waste does not include this. It does on Bonhon. And, uh, and this area, particularly, I will return to in a bit, um, because that has specifically to do with knowledge. As you were mentioning, uh, the business models, uh, the whole idea of thinking of waste as resources in a business model, that is, that is not just a matter of planning. It's a matter of strategy development. So, so that's next in line. The last green ones we've postponed until uh, further out, that's all the difficult stuff. All the insulation, all the chemicals, all that hoping that there will be better solutions at that point. So we sort of uh, categorized it into let's do the immediate tasks first, let's do the next level a second, and then hopefully we'll figure out what to do with the, with the really dirty stuff later. So that's the, that's the waste hierarchy. You can see, uh, since we don't have an incineration plan by 2020, uh, 2032, that one is, uh, is, uh, is blocked out. Uh, what the main focus is, of course, uh, then prevention and uh, preparing for reuse. And this is where it comes to uh, be of importance that we are an island. Because when you look at circular economy, quite often you use the, the image of the space shuttle. A circular economy is, is understood that way that everything has to be catered for. But as we all know here, that's not a realistic soci uh, scenario in a modern society. We, we're not isolating ourselves. We can't do everything. So it has to be a penetrable uh, idea of circular economy. We have to limit as much waste on the island, but we still have to understand the resources will go in and out. We will never have economies of scale that can treat, for instance, pulp or plastic or, uh, well, we do have a biogas plant, but all of those uh, industrial processes need a certain volume. So we have, to be, we have to understand that it is about detecting the, the like you said, the value chain of the, um, of the resources and then direct them the right way. <coughs> The middle part, I said I would return to the middle part of the green where we, it was business, uh, business innovation uh, driving the, the, uh, uh, the path towards um, uh, zero waste in 2032. We've started that off with a, a project, uh, we call it um, in Danish it's Bayer durch die Bundlinie Bonholm, it means a sustainable bottom line. Uh, because it has to do with focusing on the, the, the 
um, ups, upcycling and the reduction of waste so that it be, turn, turning it into resources, thereby gaining a better bottom line. And what we have uh, experienced from this uh, is that we have uh, one entity within the uh, council that has the responsibility of giving guidelines to uh, companies of uh, keeping the task levels, uh, the, um, um, keeping the levels of uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, legislation. You know, the, the sort of the control uh, system. They know about environment, but they don't have the trust of the companies. In actual fact, when they come out, their job is to inspect. So they have half an hour to expect and see what's wrong with the company and then they're kicked out. There is not basis for a dialogue of a future cooperation or, or development. On the other hand, we have an entity that gives uh, guidelines to the companies of business development, how to recruit, how to improve the strategy, all the business development sides of, of, of counselling. They just don't know about environment. So to have those two capacities uh, co collaborate, so to actually begin to understand circular economy as a platform for innovation, as a platform for business development, that will be crucial. And this is why we're having this um, project now. We're trying to figure out what to do by the time we get to the middle green part of, uh, of that table where we need to have good tools for the businesses. So, uh, you can see the dotted line for 2032, that's, that's our milestone, because that's where we need to have it solved. Had we been in another situation, we could have waited, and it would have been a cheaper option. Uh, when technology is mature, you can do, do it cheaper. If we do mid-range, it's going to be really expensive, because the, the advantage of doing it, well, how we're doing it, saying we want to be uh, zero waste in 2032, then we get uh, the opportunity to do the development projects with other technology partners. Then suddenly you get, you get the financing of being up front in the bus. So we had that choice, either wait or be in front in this, in this uh, scenario. We just didn't have a choice because uh, uh, then we are looking into an issue in 2032. Um, so. Uh, really, it's, uh, it's, it's about making economy uh, uh, sustainable and, and what is, what is uh, in reality is that we've set aside two full-time employees um, uh, to not, not be planning and organizing waste handling, but to be building up research projects, development projects, to start gaining knowledge of how do we do this. Um, and the cost of that alone is uh, one to two percent of the tariffs, as the citizens know it, know it now. <coughs> so uh, basically, that's uh, that's uh, everything I have for um, for for this uh, round. Thanks a lot, Anna, for your very interesting uh, presentation. I think that maybe some of our members could be uh, interested to learn uh, a little bit more. So maybe they could come to Bornholm and discover, okay. have a discussion with your service uh, and try to uh, learn again and again and replicate in their highlands. So thanks again. Maybe there will be uh, some minutes uh, uh, during the debate for uh, explaining more in the detail your presentation. Okay, so let's move to the next next uh, uh, speaker, Mr. Kutsusubas, uh, uh, Professor Kutsubas. So you have the floor. Thank you. Do you need the remote control? Yes, please. Okay. Good luck to you. So. Uh, First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the CPMR uh, to invite me to uh, make a presentation today in uh, their annual assembly. Uh, I have the two identities which are shown here. I am professor of marine biology in the Department of Marine Science in the University of Aegean. However, I am mostly here 
with the other identity uh, since I am the head of the management body of the National Marine Park of Zakynthos, uh, one of the Ionian Islands. Uh, the park is, I would dare to say, it's a famous park since uh, it is a well-known uh, uh, park uh, for uh, the activities for conservation regarding the Loggerhirsi turtle uh, Careta Careta, uh, at least for uh, uh, the Mediterranean populations which are endangered. Today, uh, I think I, I will try to, to show how we, how we can have uh, benefits for people and nature uh, through an ecosystem-based uh, approach. And uh, the example uh, for this is uh, uh, an internet-made uh, project, uh, uh, EU project, uh, the Plastic Busters MPAs, which actually is uh, an holistic approach to preserve biodiversity from plastics in the Mediterranean MPAs. Speaking for plastics, uh, here you see uh, from uh, studies uh, covering uh, almost uh, all the world uh, in a big range of different areas that plastics are everywhere. Plastics are on the beach, plastics are on the sea bottom, plastics are on the pelagic environment, and uh, we see here areas uh, where we uh, do have uh, uh, the data for uh, this observation. Um, United States, uh, America, North America, Africa, Asia, Europe, everywhere. And uh, in the next slide, uh, we can see uh, how many different uh, uh, living organisms are affected uh, one or another way by plastics, uh, either because uh, they ingest plastics, either because they have entangled plastics, and. Uh, um, we can see that we have uh, sea mammals, we have birds, we have uh, reptiles like the loggerhead sea turtle I mentioned earlier. We have uh, invertebrates like octopuses, uh, we have fishes, uh, we have monk seals, we have everything which are affected by plastics. And here in this slide you can see the what we say macroplastics because if somebody would consider also uh, the microplastics, which are uh, plastics uh, with a size less than five uh, millimeters, then uh, uh, the problem is becoming bigger uh, because um, uh, a lot of different organisms, uh, for example, feces and mussels, uh, which are consumed by humans, uh, the, you can find in their tissues uh, microplastics. Uh, uh, in some cases, these uh, ingested microplastics may transport chemicals. Uh, in the lower part of the slide, you can see different sources of microplastic. Uh, and uh, somebody should also stay for a while in the uh, biomagnification of microplastic. You can see in the central upper part uh, how microplastics are ingested, are getting inside the plankton, and then plankton are eaten by small fishes, and small fishes are eaten by bigger fishes. So, you know, there is a concentration of microplastics in, in this uh, uh, higher level uh, of organisms. Coming now to our sea, the Mediterranean Sea, uh, somebody uh, should uh, stay in the fact that uh, the Mediterranean is one of the areas most affected by marine litter in the world. However, despite this fact, uh, uh, the impacts of marine litter to marine biota within MPAs, uh, especially, and uh, also if we focus on endangered species, is something which remains poorly addressed. And also, prevention and mitigation measures are urgently needed. So, the overall Plastic Buster MPAs project, which, uh, as you see, uh, started last year and uh, will go on to 2022, is uh, to contribute uh, to maintain biodiversity and preserving natural ecosystems in, in Mediterranean, pelagic, and coastal marine protected areas by defining and implementing a harmonized approach against marine litter, which, as you can see in the picture on the right, is so many years to decompose in the environment. If somebody would uh, ask a question, uh, which is, uh, as uh, you see in the right upper part, of the slide, uh, why to 
is, is, is the main goal of the Plastic Buster and PH project. Why to maintain biodiversity? Why, why we should protect biodiversity? And how this is connected with uh, what is the focus of this panel uh, um, economy? I think uh, uh, you can see the answer because uh, it's not only uh, uh, biodiversity of natural systems, uh, complex interaction between organs and the organ environment, health and resilience of natural systems, all this have to do with the uh, physical environment. However, as you can see in the end, um, uh, this uh, healthy situation and environment is uh, which provides multiple goods and services. That is, uh, only if somebody uh, would make a refer to, to tourism, uh, to fisheries, uh, aquaculture, I think uh, there is an answer in economy and why biodiversity conservation is connected with, uh, with economy. Going to the Plastic Buster MPH project, here we can see through different work packages uh, what, what, which are the, the main objectives uh, of this project, uh, which as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we, we think that we can uh, achieve uh, uh, through a multidisciplinary and integrated approach um, uh, different issues. Um, first one is to define harmonized methodologies uh, at regional and national level for marine litter monitoring, especially in the Mediterranean marine protected areas. Identify marine litter hotspots uh, uh, to, to see in which areas of the marine protected areas uh, marine litter accumulate and uh, uh, of course, these are areas where uh, different species in the marine realm live and feed. To assess the impact of marine litter on biodiversity, which is something crucial. Then implement marine litter prevention and mitigation measures. And uh, uh, the last but not least, to set up a joint governance plans for managing marine litter in uh, both pelagic and coastal Mediterranean MPAs. We expect that we uh, will also capitalize on results and outputs delivered by relevant initiatives and projects. And of course, uh, uh, we expect that uh, this project will uh, uh, greatly support implementation of the Mediterranean strategy for uh, diversity and the Barcelona Convention Regional Plan on marine litter management in the Mediterranean. Two basic uh, actions uh, are uh, foreseen and uh, have already started in the, in the, in the project. Uh, the one is to, to make a test uh, uh, by applying uh, specific protocols. I'm going to show you in the next slide in different areas, which are uh, shown here in this map in the Mediterranean with red. Uh, there are different marine protected areas like the Pelago Sanctuary, International uh, Marine Park uh, between France and Italy, a northern part of Corsica, uh, which is a big area, and then the Tuscan Archipelagos, uh, the Zagithos National Marine Park I mentioned in the beginning, the Parque Nacional del Archipelago de Cabrera from Spain. These are areas where we are going to have a test of the scientific protocols, and then we are going to have a series of other marine parks uh, in the Mediterranean where uh, there is going to be transferred of the knowledge which has been obtained in the first uh, category of marine parks where we are going to have the test. And what do we mean by, by test? What is uh, this is going to, 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 to do? Uh, we see in the picture on the right, we are going to have, of course, identification of marine litter by indicators, uh, by a thorough uh, survey in the literature, then uh, we are going to, to, to have uh, uh, the particular organisms in which we are going to see what uh, uh, are the impacts of the marine litter, uh, fishes, uh, birds, uh, um, sea turtles, uh, uh, cetaceans, uh, and then uh, um, we are going to, to, to make uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, sorry, I, I forgot to change the slide. Uh, here you see the, the um, procedures which are uh, in the testing of uh, the activities of the project in the different areas, in the first category of uh, money protected areas. And in the next slide, we are can see the transferring in the other areas in different target groups. 
the knowledge which has been obtained in the testing. Um, uh, we see we are uh, going to include uh, uh, in the target groups uh, uh, marine protected areas managers, local public authorities, regional public authority, national public authority, uh, non-governmental environmental uh, organization, uh, higher education research, business support organization, and of course the national organizations uh, through a series of uh, different tools. Uh, a last issue which is also important is that uh, the Plastic Buster MPH project tackles one of the main challenges of our era and one of the main challenges of all science policy society projects which is uh, to bridge the gap between science policy and society and uh, connect the information, production and knowledge generation to its use in the decision making process at different levels. We see, uh, I mentioned also earlier, the project is uh, I uh, believe that will have a significant contribution to the key legislative frameworks related to marine litters, uh, like the Marine Strategy for Diversity, the Barcelona Convention on Regional Plan on Marine Litter in the Mediterranean. Uh, we expect that we are going to build uh, strong synergies with relevant projects and initiatives taking place in the Mediterranean. Uh, we'll contribute uh, to the uptake of prevention and mitigation measures by national programs. Uh, in the different partner countries. Uh, we expect to promote the implementation of the joint government scheme with regard to marine litter management in Mediterranean and marine protected areas. Uh, and of course, uh, it is estimated that uh, we'll provide a common framework uh, for future marine litter actions uh, for Mediterranean marine MPAs and decision makers at a local, national, and regional level. <laughs> Finish, finishing less than one minute. Here is uh, the last uh, slide showing uh, uh, the different uh, partners in the program. Uh, you can see so, how, so many countries uh, around Europe and uh, different partners. And for somebody who would like to have uh, um, further info can go to um, the links shown uh, here. So that's all. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, <laughs> Professor uh, Kutsovas. I'm sure that uh, we will have the opportunity to talk with you later or during the dinner this night about your measure. So we move to the last speaker. Luca, you have the floor and you need the remote control. Thank you very much, uh, Giuseppe, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Let's see if it's working. I, I'll just make a, a general uh, overview on, um, on um, the circular economy from our perspective, but in particular focusing on, uh, on the, the plastic strategy and, uh, and the single-use plastic directive that is going to be adopted in a uh, few weeks by the, by the Parliament and, uh, and, the, and the European Council. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the Commission adopted an action plan for the circular economy uh, three, almost three years ago, in 2015, and actually we published a report on, uh, on the result, the achievement made so far uh, a couple of weeks ago, which showed that we are already in a, in a very good track. This uh, circular economy action plan was actually the, also, the, if you want, the, the document that introduced uh, the, the commitment of for having a plastic strategy and, and for, uh, subsequently uh, for going for this uh, specific action on, uh, on reducing the single-use plastics. Um, as you probably know, uh, we, there are forecast uh, simulations showing that uh, if we continue with the current uh, path and use of plastic in uh, by 2050 there will be more plastic than fish in uh, in the sea and uh, this of course is, is raising many many different kind of concern and challenges if you want because uh, we have first first of all uh, clearly an uh, unhealth concern i can just mention that uh, uh, scientists have found uh, in uh, in the human body basically in the in the um, intestine uh, tracts uh, already traces of uh, microliter 
uh, we don't have a clear uh, picture of what is happening, for example, uh, in the food value chain with the nanoplastics. They potentially could also uh, move from, uh, from the intestines to, uh, to the blood, for example. And so there are several aspects that still needing uh, to be studied, uh, assessed, and I mean there, there are many dynamics that are not yet uh, clear. And uh, um, we have already evidence of the fact that uh, uh, the presence of plastic in, uh, in at sea is uh, and let's say entailing a degradation of marine ecosystem, 13 billion euros a year estimation. We have a clear impact on fish and aquaculture from 1% to 5% of total fleet revenue and ports shippings. And then, uh, of course, tourism, coastal communities are the most directly affected. The cost for uh, cleaning beaches is uh, on average 630 million uh, euro per year. As I said, the, the plastic strategy was uh, established following the, the adoption of the Action Plan for the Circular Economy, um, focusing Referring to the marine litter, it focuses mainly on, on four, I would say, areas. Uh, action on intentionally added microplastics is the issue of uh, making sure that we are not going anymore to use microplastic in cosmetic <laughs> products, for example. And this uh, UI restriction could be already be in place by, by next year. The revision of the port reception facilities directive. It is clear that there is an issue related to uh, all the, if you want, waste and, uh, that are generated on ships, but also that are collected at sea. The waste, the, the waste framework directive, which has actually amended uh, recently in 2018, and which is interesting because it is uh, uh, looking in particular to all the aspects related to the, the cleanup. I'll elaborate further uh, on this uh, later on in my presentation. And finally, as I say, the directive on single-use plastic and the reduction of uh, loss or abandoned fishing gears at sea. This directive actually has been already agreed between the Council and, uh, and the Parliament, I mean the trilogue between Commission, Council and Parliament. Uh, the agreement was achieved uh, in December last year and is going to be voted by, yeah, by, the, by the Parliament uh, next week on the 27th of March while the, the Council will, uh, will have a final vote uh, on it uh, on 15 of April. Uh, to explain why we have this focus on the single-use plastics. Uh, because actually they are the most found marine litter items in uh, all uh, European uh, beaches. They, they count for 50%. And 10 of those items represent 86% of those 50%. So we, we talk about 43% of the total um, litter, plastic litter that is uh, found uh, in our beaches. Um, if we consider also the lost fishing gears, they count for 27%. We basically uh, reach 70% of all the plastic that is found at sea, at least around Europe. So it is important to understand that uh, by applying this directive, our objective is really to, let's say, to reduce at least by 70% all the plastic that is uh, reaching the, the sea. Those, this is the list of the, uh, those main 10 uh, items and um, in a ranking order. I'm not going to, to, to mention them just for you. Uh, it is important to understand that this action is not against plastic. Uh, we are talking about circular economy. So the idea is to apply the, the so-called three R's principle, uh, redesign, reuse, and recycle. And here in particular is a matter of uh, uh, of course, there is an element of uh, recycling, but it's really redesigning, changing the, the materials. And uh, this is also why, I mean, uh, we have identified several kind of measures that are uh, actually foreseen by the directive. So we are looking to single-use and multi-use alternatives, effects on consumer and producer, implementation, of course. But basically, we look to the market restriction, which is in particular the, the ban of uh, those 10 items <coughs> that I was mentioning. But also uh, consumption reduction, the design, as I said, also the extended producer responsibility, this is particularly important for fishermen, separate collection depo and deposit, uh, and of course, awareness raising measure, which is really important because actually, the, the issue of reducing, if you want, uh, uh, plastic at sea is really related First of all, also to the behaving behavior, the, 
the attitude of, of all citizens, all of, all of us. Um, I'll go quickly, consumption reduction, we say, just uh, to, um, to mention, recall uh, the food containers, caps of beverages, so um, this is also important to work on uh, re 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 reducing basically the consumption of on-the-go products. And of course, uh, we leave a lot of space to member states on this. Each member state will, uh, will have a chance to, to define or uh, identify the measure that they consider more appropriate and in particular more effective uh, in their case. As I said before, the market restriction. So basically, mostly those kind of uh, items, cotton, but sticks, cutlery, plates, straws, beverage tiers, sticks for balloons, and as again, product design requirement. In particular, it is worth to uh, sorry, it's worth to um, to recall uh, the plastic caps and lids that have uh, to remain attached during use. So as I said. We are passing a message to the industries on this, because um, if you look to the waste management uh, measure, um, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not for tomorrow. Uh, we are to looking in particular to, uh, on targets that uh, um, refer to 2025 and 2030. So in a way, uh, the idea of uh, using, for example, deposit uh, refund system and targets for uh, extended producer responsibilities, mm -hmm. plastic beverage bottles by 2025, but in particular to work on the plastic packaging, recycling of uh, all the, the packaging by, let's say, of, with a target of 55% by 2030. So this is important to allow the industries to adapt to change and, uh, and uh, modify also the business model, but in particular the materials that they use. <coughs> we have, been, of course, uh, made an impact assessment, uh, identified the main uh, expected result, benefit, and also cost. I will go very, very quickly. Uh, what is important, uh, I already mentioned the, the plastic reduction at sea, but I think it's also important to, to evoke the fact that it will be uh, a reduction of the CO2 emission. 3.4 million tons. So this will also contribute to the fight against uh, climate change, in particular in terms of course of mitigation. Uh, avoid environmental damage that I was mentioning before, which is estimated to 23 billion. Saving for consumers, uh, 6.5 billion. Jobs creation, 30,000. We have also to consider that this uh, exercise will also destroy some jobs because we cannot expect that the, 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 the change of business uh, model by, by some industry will not affect also the existing uh, um, jobs. But the overall uh, impact will be positive. And of course, there are additional costs uh, for around uh, 3.2 billion euro. So anyway, very well compensated, I would say, by, by the benefits. To close quickly, um, this part of my presentation, look, um, making a reference to, in particular, to the um, extended producer responsibility for fishermen, related in particular to the fishing gear. We are working uh, extensively on, on it. Uh, is related because there are many aspects to be addressed. You have to consider that uh, uh, current fishing gears made with plastic uh, materials uh, can survive uh, underwater 600 years. Of course, they have been produced for working in salt water. So uh, there is a first issue, which is uh, um, to develop also new technology that can facilitate the finding of lost gears. Um, there is an issue of, uh, in particular, using new material that can be um, reused or recycled in a, in a better way, more effectively. There are already actually interesting cases of, for example, companies that are using uh, dismissed um, fishing gears for producing clothes. So actually it's already possible, but of course by improving the materials, the quality, we can do much more. And uh, of course for us this is all part of Blue Grow because in a way it's a, it's a matter of developing new technologies, also new business, new jobs. Just as an example, we, we launched last year um, a call, uh, EMFF Indirect Management is a European Maritime Fisheries Fund. We have a, a specific envelope for uh, developing the, the integrated maritime policy in the blue economy. And it is quite interesting to see there are already five projects, 
focusing in particular on, on those aspects related to recycling, fish, uh, fish, uh, sorry, fish uh, ghost uh, nets uh, and um, fish gears. And as you can see, uh, they are more or less covering uh, all the sea bays in uh, around Europe. Perhaps we have only, only missed Baltic so far. <laughs> I would like just to make a link here to the future because uh, um, the MFF proposal for the period 2021-2027 has a strong focus on, uh, on all the aspects related to circular economy for uh, the maritime, the blue economy, fisheries uh, as well. And uh, uh, we have foreseen the possibility to find a section related to removal, uh, fishing for litter, cleanup campaigns, both in share and direct management. So it's quite, uh, I would like to pass a message to all of you because this is also in particular relevant for, uh, for Ireland. And, uh, and you should absolutely uh, get already in, uh, in contact with all the parties in your countries to make sure that uh, the new generation of operational programs will also address those aspects, uh, at least for the areas of your interest. So what you can do at your level, uh, in your uh, constituencies, uh, your regions, uh, towns, etc. Because this is an opportunity, it's important that you don't miss it. Of course, there are many others related in particular to, to the ERDF, but I, I want to just make this, uh, this reference to, to inform you. Another piece of information about funding. We are establishing, uh, let's say, working on a blue economy investment platform. Um, um, assistance mechanism is going to be launched in, uh, in the forthcoming weeks. Uh, we have also planned to launch a specific uh, call for, uh, for grants, for proposal, new conditional grants. It's important that you know that we have also focused on circular economy here. So everything which is related to uh, those aspects uh, for recycling, for just an example, boat recycling is an area that is, uh, is requiring a lot of investment and, and, and development. We have plenty of leisure boats around uh, Europe and uh, many of them need to be dismissed. Uh, there is an area, a new business area if you want, that uh, shouldn't be um, neglected. And, uh, under this platform, we work a lot also on uh, marine renewable energies, digitalization in the blue economy, so all areas that may, in a way, interest also the, the economy of the island. I will quickly close making a reference to the Sibesi strategies. Um, as you probably know, we have uh, two, let's say, Sibesi based uh, macro ranger strategies in the Baltic and the Adriatic Ionian. The second was, in particular, uh, mentioned by Mr. Alessakis. A new one in the Western Mediterranean, which is a, a purely space strategy, and also in the Atlantic. We are also working in the Black Sea to develop a common maritime agenda. It's important to recall that all those have uh, a, a focus on marine litter, or trying to address uh, some issues related to, to marine litter. This is in particular true for, for the Adriatic Ionian and, and the Western Mediterranean. And, uh, mm, Currently, with DG uh, research and also uh, the, the countries that have developed the, the so-called Blue Med initiative, which is the um, strategic uh, research and, and innovation agenda for uh, uh, the, the marine environment, uh, we are developing a, a new pilot initiative, which is called Towers of Plastic Free Mediterranean Sea, which is quite interesting because it's trying to put all together the initiative project activities that are currently being developed in the Mediterranean, uh, define the priority for the future and basically uh, inform, uh, if you want to uh, uh, yeah, feed the future rise on Europe uh, uh, that will be launched in uh, 2020, 2021 under the new MFF. So again, uh, this actually is a pilot that which is conceived for then developing, developing a specific mission under uh, Horizon on Europe. So the idea is that should benefit all the, the, the sea basin of Europe. Eh? We are starting from the, from the Mediterranean, as because, as was said also by the, the speakers that uh, intervened before me, we have a particular emergence in the Mediterranean, and there is already actually a lot uh, uh, taking place in terms of research and innovation. Thank you very much for your time.
Thanks, Luca. Thanks a lot for your very interesting uh, presentation. So we now uh, now we can open the debate. We have the time for a couple of questions. So you, uh, please, it's up to you. Do you have uh, any burning question? Yes, please, Jasper. Interesting, interesting lectures and outtakes when it comes to plastics and microplastics, especially in the in the ocean. I must say that when it comes to plastics in 2019, you can't help but being a little bit frightened because looking at the oceans around the world, also looking at the lakes, almost none of them um, that we have looked into don't have microplastics in them. Uh, so we read in the news that eight of the ten most polluted by rivers, most polluted by uh, plastics are in Asia, but when it comes to lakes and, and oceans near us, microplastics can be found in them as well. And I must say when it comes to fishing gear um, and abandoned fishing gear in the oceans, I am no diver, but looking at how much fishing gear is sold and looking at how much fishing gear is um, put in the waste basket and recycled, you can see that there's an enormous difference. So any any steps towards making sure that they don't end up in the ocean are, are very welcome, actually. But my question to Kots uh, Kotsubas and Marangoni comes from a, from a Swedish study conducted 2017, which said that two of the main sources for microplastics in, in Swedish waters are first, car tires, that when they get old they deteriorate and, and uh, microplastics get out into the to the water and the second one is washing machines actually that when you wash different fabrics fabrics at a at a high temperature they release a lot of microplastics and there's been been a debate it's not a big debate it's not you know something that everyone talks about but there's been a debate regarding uh, introducing labels or marking on car tires regarding their toughness and rigidity or looking into different kind of types of filter um, solutions for washing machines. Is this something that you have discussed or can shed some additional light on? Thank you. Okay, maybe there is another uh, question. We can take another question. Yes, please. Um, my name is, uh, I'm a professor in Creta, in Technical University of Creta. I'm um, uh, working for the Environmental Engineering School. Um, just a question to Mrs. Thomas from Borholm. And, and the question is simple, but for us it's very important. Um, during the last 40 years, the technologies are there. We know the technologies, how to recycle, how to collect, how to minimize waste, things like that are already solved. The critical point are the people, I mean, the behavioral. So uh, I know that uh, in, uh, in Sweden we have a, they were more have more discipline to apply some things, and uh, so I'm curious to see because this near zero is very complex. It's not only the citizens there. Uh, in Bochum you have also visitors. So I would like to know if you have some ideas how how to solve and minimize uh, this uh, this uh, amount of waste. Thank you. Tak. Thanks, sir. Yeah, um, just to react to the first question, you are fully right. Actually, the, the microfiber are, are everywhere, are probably also in this water. Because, um, yeah, it's, it's clearly, I, I, I don't want to call it an emergency, but uh, it's true that uh, we have to take all it uh, uh, probably at two levels. One could be the, the washing machine. But I would say, first of all, probably working also on textile materials, but anyway, the washing machine could be. But the first issue is probably the fact that uh, our uh, wastewater treatment plant have not been uh, conceived uh, for uh, blocking the, the microfibers. So actually, you, you can find microfibers everywhere, lakes, uh, etc. And um, I fully agree, uh, is an aspect that is going to be take or from a different point of view, I would say. It's more related to the, the, the water framework directive and, and all the aspects related to uh, water, uh, yeah, wastewater treatment. And 
I was just on this other aspect that you um, <laughs> raised. Actually, we have focus mainly on the so-called single-use plastic items, but this does not mean that member states can adapt and look uh, to also to, to other uh, items, and in particular, um, yeah, f it's true that uh, it's probably necessary to, to, to start looking also to different kind of or new adapted labels that uh, are also taking into consideration th those aspects. And uh, for sure there are good, uh, I would say, quite a, a lot of uh, citizen consumers that would be keen or would take care of this when making this choose. I mean, thank you. I think, uh, considering the microplastics, I think the answer has been already given. Um, uh, considering the tires you mentioned, uh, you should imagine that some years ago we were putting them in, in, in the marine environment and creating, you know, artificial reefs. So, okay, we are a step ahead, I, I, I think. Uh, however, as already mentioned, we should uh, try to strengthen our, our efforts uh, towards, uh, you know, by labeling, by using uh, materials which are recycled and so on. So, uh, with my answer, I want to say that uh, um, we should be not optimistic, but not pessimistic also, okay? But we should keep on going our efforts. Thanks. Uh, as to the waste handling, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, I would like to uh, divide my uh, answer into two. Uh, the, the first part is, uh, is the consumers uh, and, and the behavior of, of uh, tourists. Um, I think it's two-sided uh, because a, a lot of uh, tourists, at least the tourists that come to, to Bornholm, are, are quite um, environmentally oriented and they demand uh, as a part of the service, the possibility of sorting their waste. Uh, there's also part of uh, the tourism that come uh, for recreation, and recreation means uh, you don't have to do anything, uh, let alone uh, sort your waste. So, so there's definitely a matter of culture. Um, we haven't we haven't engaged much in uh, in the culture amongst the tourists. But we do address the culture among our uh, citizens. We have uh, we have two development projects going on right now. Uh, one has to do with uh, uh, the actual uh, collection uh, bins on, on on how how you can place them. Uh, also, because some of our and I I reckon that goes for for a lot of you too. Some of our uh, cities have uh, uh, centres, uh, very old centres that have narrow streets and uh, and our. Um, yeah, they have a sp special uh, atmosphere that we want to maintain. So, how can you? What types of uh, systems work uh, for the pr uh, purpose there? And another project we have is where a whole community is actually engaging as a community project on how to reuse, how to uh, increase also the uh, the amounts reused, uh, and and they see it. Uh, it's. It's a city on Bonholm which has traditionally not been the most popular place to move to. It's one of those outskirt places that it's not very, it's not just not very popular. But just telling the story of them being a community who, uh, who are uh, working to, together for sustainability gives them hope of having a certain identity so they actually um, um, uh, increase the interest for their area. So that's that's the that's that part of the question. The other part is. Uh, I think it's very important to remember that, that decreasing waste is not only uh, an end uh, consumer scenario, it's also, you said, reuse uh, and redesign, uh, and, and a lot of it is actually in the industrial uh, area. How do you design products? How do you design the process? How, how do you design for, for longer durability? Uh, and all of those things, uh, what type also in the, uh, you were talking about agri-food in, in Creed, uh, what, how, do you, how do you think in local, uh, local supplies and all of that is a very, very big part of the, uh, of the waste, waste hierarchy. And, uh, and that's why we're looking at the business part as well. So I, I don't think, I, I don't think it's, it's just a matter of, of culture, but yes, absolutely, it is also a matter of culture. Okay, thanks a lot. Do you have any burning question for our uh, speakers? No. So maybe we can uh,
close this session, uh, I would like just to make a comment from my end to Luca. Luca, you said that uh, Digimar is launching this blue economic investment uh, platform uh, and uh, that you are expected to have uh, specific calls for uh, marine litter and the circular economy. So, okay. I can elaborate a bit. Okay, thanks. We think that uh, maybe there, is, there could be something specific for islands. We are, uh, of course, in front line when it comes to uh, circular economy and the fight uh, against the marine litter. So please uh, take in consideration this uh, formal or official request because I think that uh, we are again in the front line, but we are also laboratory for innovative solution. Thanks a lot. So let me thank uh, the speakers. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, to take this moment with you and to learn from you. And let's move to the next session. Uh, before there will be a coffee break, but uh, please, you know that we are running out of the time, so you have just 15 minutes for the coffee break. <laughs> Even less for you.